Right, so today we are looking at one of the most vile and misogynistic men in 90 Day Fiancé history. After briefly introducing the couple in my first video on the show, over the next two videos we're going to be looking at the full story of Richard and Kathleen from Season 1 of 90 Day Fiancé UK. By way of a quick recap, Richard is a 42 year old pub quiz business owner from Preston, England. He's been searching for a wife to do all of the household chores whilst also working a full time job paying half the bills. And to find a willing victim, he's been searching in Southeast Asia where he believes that women are born to want to do these things. Somehow he has found one. Her name is Kathleen she's 32 years old and she's from Cebu in the Philippines. Last time out we only met Richard so now it's time for us to meet the other half. Richard is very handsome for me. I, li I, I love his eyes. Um, he is very funny and he talks a lot. He is not boring to be with. It was never Kathleen's plan to be with someone from outside the country, let alone the other side of the world. But apparently she ended up falling in love with him because of his sincerity and because of how much effort he was putting into the relationship early on. She also says that he's different from the men that she's met before in the Philippines and that she really is attracted to him physically. But although she certainly approves, for now at least, her family aren't exactly sold on him. My family thinks that Richard is same with the other white man who comes here in Philippines and look for a sex slave. So yeah, her family, and in particular her father, think he's a sex tourist. And that's a big deal because Kathleen is really close to her family. In fact, she actually still lives at home with her parents and her brother. They own a family store nearby which she spends the majority of her time working at. And because her mum has Parkinson's, she also does the majority of the housework. I'm guessing that's why she doesn't have a huge issue with Richard's insistence that she does both if and when she arrives in the UK. That being said, her family aren't the only ones that have concerns. One thing Kathleen is particularly worried about about is Richard's loyalty issues. In the last video, Richard repulsively said that he loves to flirt with other women and that he struggles to say no at the end of the night when they say that they want more. And to make matters far worse, last time he visited her in the Philippines, she actually caught him in the act. I, I caught him talking with other, other girls. I, I have a weakness for a good bottom. <laughs> Nice to see his three caveman brain cells find his lack of self-control entertaining. So yeah, he hadn't actually done anything physically yet, but he was messaging multiple other girls on dating apps. And no doubt if she hadn't caught him, he probably would have ended up going through with some of it. And what's even more disrespectful is the fact that he was doing it from her phone too. He actually lost his phone so she was letting him borrow hers, and he was using it to message other local girls. And I was screenshotting the most beautiful of women or lady boys. Not my cup of tea, but each to their own. It's not even that I'm judging him for anyway, it's his pig-headed arrogance and disrespect. He says it so shamelessly too, like getting caught trying to cheat is a minor indiscretion. And given he was saving pictures to her camera roll and downloading apps that ping with notifications, it almost makes me think he wanted her to find out. When I found out that Richard was talking with different women, I was really hurt and really sad because I didn't expect that he can do such a thing. Thankfully, she had the self-respect to dump him there and then. Afterwards, he flew back home and she blocked him on everything. However, as I'm sure you've guessed by now, that wasn't the end of the story. Six months later, overcome with desperation and regret, he hatched a plan to weasel his way back into her life. And so not long after that, Kathleen got a call from her bank saying that she had received some unexpected money. Yes, Kathleen, I did send you some money because I wanted to make sure that you'd survive the pandemic. That then got us communicating again, and here we are today. It's so transparent, isn't it? He realised he messed up, and he went crawling back to her. And the fact that he exploited a global pandemic, and the fact that her family aren't particularly well off, makes the whole thing even more contemptible. And, once again, to somehow make it even worse, he wasn't even wallowing in self-pity for those six months. He was actually cracking on with other women pretty much from day one. In our little blip, I did find a another hot Asian babe. So surprise, surprise, during their break, he went back to scouring the Asian market. And after quickly meeting a woman online, he went to visit her in Malaysia. Or at least that's what he said to Kathleen. Given he was caught actively pursuing other women earlier on in their relationship, it would not surprise me at all if in secret, he had actually continued long after that. And so I have a sneaking suspicion that he actually connected with this woman for the first time when he was actually 
actually still with Kathleen. Either way, after that relationship failed, he got back in contact with Kathleen and began the lies and the groveling. What he what he told me when he was with a, with that girl the whole time, he was think he all think about me. He compared the girl to me. It's such a classic lie that it's almost a complete cliche at this point. Not that I'm blaming her in any way, but I'm actually surprised that Kathleen is naive enough to fall for it. In fact, Richard also claims that whilst he was out in Malaysia, he realised that he'd be having a better time with Kathleen and that he was regretful about the whole situation. So according to him, he decided to call things off with this girl so that he could try to fix things with Kathleen. I mean, to be fair, the, the sex was pretty amazing, but I, I'm not in it for that. I mean, it, I, you don't, you don't want to marry the dirty girl. You want to marry the good girl, and Kathleen's the good girl. He says all this, but I'm not sure how much I believe him. I get the feeling this Malaysian woman either dumped him because of who he is as a person, or because she refuses to fulfil the role that he demands, i.e. doing all the cooking, cleaning, and paying for half of everything. Either way, it's gross and disrespectful enough as it is talking about previous sexual experiences you had with someone else, whilst you're in a relationship and your partner isn't even there. But to talk about how much you enjoyed it is just vile. Anyway, on with the story. So as someone who owns a pub quiz business, Richard often hosts quizzes himself. Several days ago, however, there was a twist. This time, he was hosting the quiz entirely naked. It wasn't just him though, the quiz was for a naturism group, meaning all of the attendees were also nude. I would show you a clip, but not only would that risk this video being taken down, it would also risk your most recent meal coming back up. It was almost entirely just old wrinkly men, so I assure you, you're not missing out on much. Well, unsurprisingly, he didn't actually tell Kathleen about this until after the event, and when she found out, she was not happy. Well, listen, next time anything like that comes in ever again, I'll ask your permission first. There will be no next time. So don't you ever think of doing that again. Okay. I really rate how well she stands up for herself here. And although this is technically the first portrayal of its kind, I hope she doesn't just keep giving him chances like this. I know naturism is about practicing non-sexual nudity, but he still definitely should have told her first. And I doubt he actually cares about the philosophy of the movement anyway. Well, with that speed bump overcome, they now have a hurdle to clear. Today, Kathleen gets her English test results back and she needs a pass to access the jobs market in the UK. This is obviously important because currently she plans on being a nursing assistant if and when she arrives. Baby. Yes? I don't know how to say it. I failed. Oh my god. Yes. I actually found this quite surprising because her English sounds great to me. I wonder what the standard is. That said though, it's hard to feel bad for her. Although this is a big blow to her dream of coming to the UK to live and work, if it's a step back for this relationship, it's a step in the right direction for Kathleen's life. Any obstacle that gets in the way of them being together is doing her a favour in the long run. I feel gutted for Kathleen. I'm gutted for myself. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I let you down. You didn't let me down, you did your best. Thanks for understanding. This actually caught me by surprise too. I was expecting Richard to be angry and frustrated and take it out on her, maybe blaming her for not caring enough or not studying hard enough. But he was actually very comforting and caring here. Also, whilst it does mean that she can't come to the UK to live and work anytime soon, it doesn't mean that he can't go and visit her. So he spontaneously offers to come to Cebu in her time of need. And of course, she says yes. I'm also running out of clean underwear, so it's time that I got some washing done. So I'm heading to Cebu to get my pants washed. Bye, gorgeous. See you in Cebu. Bye. Bye. This man is grim. He hasn't seen her for three years and he's going to rock up with his stinky skid mark stained underwear. Poor Kathleen. What has she gotten herself into? Well, they might have resolved the situation for now, but it's only a temporary distraction. Although whether the relationship will last long enough for Kathleen to be able to take the test again is uncertain because it sounds like Richard's head is already slightly turning. We're going to do some dancing, probably dancing with some girls, but Kathleen's the girl that I'm going to be going home with. And that makes it perfectly okay. A little bit of jealousy keeps it fresh, doesn't it? Yeah, everyone knows that the best way to keep a relationship going is a healthy dose of insecurity. Great going, you massive divvy. So not only does he flirt with other women behind Kathleen's back and do goodness knows what else with them, but he also intends on flirting with other women in front of her. I hope he gets every single bit of what's coming to him.
As long as I can look but not touch, I think I'll be just fine. I'll try my best to not do anything that would be construed as cheating. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? If he wants to go on holiday to flirt and hook up with random women, why is he in a relationship in the first place? Why doesn't he just do the right thing and break up with her and book a solo holiday out there? Or at least if he wants to engage with other people, why doesn't he look for someone who's happy to have an open relationship? I just don't get how you can lack this much self-awareness. Well, as much as it doesn't make sense to us, it makes sense to him. So shortly after this conversation, he touches down in the Philippines. <laughs> Man, what is it with creeps on this channel and wearing tie-dye t-shirts? First Danny from Adults Adopting Adults and now this. It even looks like a scene from Adults Adopting Adults. He absolutely dwarfs her. Thankfully this time she's only 10 years off his age and not 37, but there's still something very off about this relationship. Oh, you, have you shrunk? Let's go home, baby. Let's go. Come on. My word, the bending over and nestling his head into her neck makes me feel so uncomfortable. And it gets even worse too. Rather than going back to Kathleen's house straight away, they decide to spend their first night together in a hotel room. Given it's been so long since they last saw each other, Kathleen was kind of hoping that Richard had something planned for the evening, like maybe a romantic dinner or a night of drinks and deep conversations. But as it turns out, Richard had a very different idea. Pepe! Can I get a massage? What a charming gentleman. If you needed any more confirmation that this man's sole intentions with Kathleen are to get a woman who will serve him, then this was surely it. Asking for a massage obviously isn't unusual in a relationship of four years, but when you haven't seen the other person for three, you'd think there'd be a bit more romance and wooing involved than flopping onto the bed and demanding your partner rub your flabby, hairy back. This is why I've missed Kathleen. She's always happy to treat me like a king. I don't blame him for being tired and passing out after such a long journey, but it's hard to not feel bad for Kathleen here. I'm sure she wouldn't have been expecting a big night out on the town till late, but even just a nice dinner or a less one-sided intimate evening would have sufficed, just to show that he cares about spending time with her and her happiness is a high priority too. Sadly, any hope of that has dealt a devastating final blow when Richard stands up, rips off his trousers, and once again comes crashing down onto the bed. <sighs> Good night, baby. Feeling disappointed and unsatisfied whilst Richard is passed out in bed next to you? Unfortunately, that's probably just something you're going to have to get used to in this relationship, Kathleen. Well, with the hotel stay over, the pair are off to meet up with Kathleen's family, with whom they'll be staying for the rest of the trip. But before then, the pair are off to make a lifelong commitment to the relationship in the form of matching tattoos matching tattoos that means that we're going to be together forever i don't want anybody else i like to look but i'm not gonna touch it will be forever we're stuck forever wow you can see how much the commitment means to kathleen it almost certainly stems from insecurities from richard's past and it definitely doesn't help that he keeps repeating this i can look but i can't touch thing don't get me wrong there's nothing inherently wrong with it like no matter how in love you are you're always going to be able to appreciate beauty in other human beings but it's how much enjoyment he gets from it that worries me and even then the whole i'm not going to touch part remains unconvincing now we have our couple tattoo which i should not do stupid things anymore like before like cheating or whatever yeah, she massively overestimates the power of this tattoo. I mean, it's not like he's got her name tattooed across his chest. It's not one another woman will see in question, and it's not one that he'll see and be reminded of Kathleen if he's cheating with someone else, unless he's got a thing for a... Uh... You know. I mean, I'm glad she's got some peace of mind from it, but I fear it's a false sense of security. And although she's feeling better about things moving forward, there is still something she wants to get off her chest before she invites him into her home. And that is the nudist pub quiz situation. Did you ask my permission? Did you ask what would I feel about it? No. Well, the money is actually paid for the majority. Yeah, you're, you're thinking about money, but you're not thinking about what would I feel. 
I always love it when these men think that their money gives them ultimate and unquestionable power over women, and then they get a massive reality check. It also completely exposes the fact that they don't see these women as human beings with actual feelings, just money oriented objects. He clearly thinks that just because she's not from a particularly wealthy background, that he can do whatever he wants, no matter how disrespectful it is to her or the relationship, as long as it brings in money. And it's just so embarrassingly ignorant. What would you feel if I do that? Um, you were naked in front of everybody. Okay. That, no, absolutely not. Exactly. It's one set of rules for him and another set of rules for her. I'm glad she's highlighting his double standards and hypocrisy here. Although I kind of don't doubt that he's aware of it already. I think he knows that this is hypocritical of him, but he just doesn't care. It's like he thinks he sets the boundaries wherever he wants and she has absolutely no input. He definitely thinks that because he's from the UK and has more money that he has all the power in this relationship and that he can do pretty much whatever he wants. But I don't think Kathleen is going to accept that at all. I can go off and do naked stuff or like completely crazy stuff. No, it should stuff. be a two-way relationship. You can't. It's not only one. I knew he was arrogant enough to be aware of it, but what he just said there and the way he said it was so much worse than I was expecting. It was like it was a power trip for him. I've disliked Richard from the first few degenerate sentences that the guy uttered, but he really is loathsome, isn't he? This whole I can do whatever I want and there's nothing you can do to stop me attitude is just so grim. How can Kathleen possibly want to continue dating someone with a mindset like this and that has no problem speaking to her like this? I just know that I've not done anything wrong. It's not too far from being a prostitute. Um, yeah, don't say no. Don't say no because it is. The main reason he thinks he hasn't done anything wrong is because of the line he keeps trying to place down and justify. It's why he keeps repeating the same thing over and over again. As long as he doesn't touch, he genuinely thinks that he's completely in the clear. He doesn't seem to realize that flirting, messaging, and getting naked around other people is massively crossing the line, if not cheating to most people. If your opinion is no, don't do it. But next time you want that fancy handbag. What? Did I ask something no. from you? Never. You never asked anything. Well, why are you me? thinking about that? Bold strategy to go back to dangling money in front of her as if she didn't make it clear about 60 seconds ago that she couldn't care less about it. Once again though, she's holding her own and she's dealing with the whole thing very well. She just doesn't seem like she's getting anywhere. His stubborn superiority complex makes everything she says bounce straight off that thick caveman skull of his. He's not going to apologize and he's not going to change, is he? I don't ask him money. Just for material things, I can buy it on my own. So it, it pisses me off. And so it should. I genuinely wonder what it is that she likes about him. It's clear from the hotel scene that the romance is dead. It's clear from the fact that he cheated on her and behaves like this and talks like this to her that he doesn't respect her. And it's clear that despite being from a not particularly affluent family that money isn't a big thing for her. But I guess we're only halfway through the season now, so maybe things will change. Maybe he'll turn out to have some redeeming qualities, or maybe her priorities will become clearer. With Kathleen's disapproving friends still to meet Richard, a big drunken night out on the town planned with just Richard and the male members of Kathleen's family, and a massive argument on the horizon, the most dramatic parts of this storyline are yet to come. Next time out, we'll finish off their story with the rest of their saga from season one in an action-packed episode. So if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch the next one as soon as it's out as well as catch more videos just like this one in future thank you for watching and hopefully i'll see you on the next one bye for now